Cool. Hey everybody. Um, so this paper we're going to go over today is uh, titled SARS-CoV-2 Replication and Airway Epithelia Requires Modal Cilia and Microvillar VR, Microvilla Microvillar Reprogramming. So I thought this was interesting because it was basically implying that um, in a, a different paper we read um, a couple weeks ago, it was implying that the microvilli are what's on Google. It's science time. Science time! Um, a paper a couple weeks ago we were reading was sort of implying that uh, the cilia in our airways are sort of allowing the um, spike protein to roll and further integrate. Um, so I thought that was really interesting and I wanted to read more about it. So I found this paper that it was referencing in that other paper and now we're going to read through it. So, um, cool. They have a little in brief section. I like that. So respiratory viruses, including COVID bypass the defensive mucus, uh, mucin layer of the airway by entering and exiting epithelial cells via their protruding modal cilia and microvia, which is what we are interested in. The highlights. COVID binds to ACE2 on multicilia in airway epithelia immediately upon infection. Uh, depleting modal cilia inhibits viral entry by COVID and other respiratory viruses. Okay. And then COVID activates PAC kinases to rearrange airway microvilli during viral exit. That's interesting. I'm interested to read that later. And then uh, Omicron variants accelerate cilia dependent entry through the airway mucin barrier. So that's going to be interesting too. Puts on goggles. <laughs> so this is going to be a really interesting paper. Um, this is the first time I was hearing about any of this kind of stuff. So let's begin. So we have a summary. That's interesting. Usually we have an abstract at the beginning. Um, so how COVID penetrates the airway barrier, mucus and per paraciliary uh, mucins to infect nasal epithelium remains unclear. Using primary nasal epithelia organoid cultures, so this is cool, this is, they're going to use um, basically little uh, cellular, cell, cellular clumps um, of that mimic nasal um, epithelial cells uh, to so, sort of simulate this, so it's a little organoid model. We found that the virus attaches to modal cilia via the ACE2 receptor. It's neat, pretty green. COVID uh, traverses the mucus layer using modal cilia as tracks to access the cell body. So that was the line that really was interesting to me um, when I was reading the other paper. I was like, huh, that's interesting. Let's learn more about it. Um, depleting cilial blocks, uh, cilia blocks infection. Depleting cilia blocks infection for COVID and other respiratory viruses. Um, but what does that mean? So if we block those cilia that are supposed to be there, is it doing something bad? Because technically I would imagine we would need those, otherwise they wouldn't exist in our bodies. Um, so COVID progeny attached to airway microvilli, uh, 24 hours post-infection and trigger formation of apically extended and highly branded, branched uh, microvilli that organize viral egress from the microvilli back to the mucus layer. Uh, supporting a model of virus dispersion through airway tissue via mucociliary transport. Okay, that's an interesting point. So, uh, phosphoproteomics uh, and kinase inhibition reveal that microvillar uh, villar remodeling is regulated by P21 activated kinase pack. Importantly, Omicron variants bind with higher affinity to modal cilia and show accelerated viral entry. Again, very interesting. It works just that modal cilia, microvilli, and mucociliary dependent mucus flow are critical for efficient viral replication and nasal epithelia. Okay, so let's see. Let me just quick control save. So we don't lose our work. No questions, we're good. Okay, so now let's learn. So, 
After SARS-CoV-2 caused the COVID pandemic, after the viral spike, glycoprotein binds to its host receptor, the angiosentinel converting enzyme ACE2 and host transmembrane serine protease 2 prime SP, uh, which is the spike glycoprotein, to facilitate viral fusion, and the virus enters the host cell and begins replication. Yep. And then we're just going to have to know that SP is going to stand for a spike protein. Um, viral replication has been modeled in tissue culture, however the primary site of COVID replication is the upper respiratory tract, which is specialized to create a barrier to virus infection. Indeed, the mechanisms of virus cell entry and exit and cell cell spread in the airway epithelium are poorly understood. Nasal airways are pseudostratified epithelia, uh, including multiciliated uh, apical epithelial basal and mucus producing goblet cells. Um, so this is just saying, a lot of fancy words, it's just saying it's um, uh, the, the cells are diversified, they're specialized, um, that's pretty much it. So the mucus layer sits atop the ciliary brush and underlying uh, paracellular layer. Um, Hi. Okay, I found a target. Bye. Uh, so I'm going to scroll real quick to see if we have a... A diagram. I would imagine if they're going to be describing that, we should have a diagram. We might not get a diagram. Hmm. Interesting. Oh! I think it's right at the bottom. Where you at? I saw you. There we go. Oh, that's the same as the beginning, so let's look at it. Right, so we have mucus flow. So this is the, the general layer. So we have our mucus layer, which is going to be like our, our snot. And then we're going to have the uh, periciliary layer, which is going to be uh, composed of microvilli, um, these little branches, and then modal cilia. So these can like move around a little bit. Um, so COVID is going to be flowing in the mucus. So I'm just going to get stuck um, to our microvilli bind with it, um, something's happening that makes it look like the microvilli are growing, maybe? And that could just be a cartoon-ish thing, but it looks like something's happening. Uh, what's HPI? Hours post-infection. So six, so it looks like um, from what they're saying is you have your COVID entry, they're being transported on these modal cilia and sort of rolling down to the microvilli. Villi, um, and then something's growing. Don't know what that is. Um, and then it's sort of infecting. Seems to be their general workflow here. Okay. So I'm um, just this is across the ciliary bush and an underlying paracillary layer. That was their diagram up there. Mucus traps virus particles that are swept to the lar uh, larynge laryngopharynx by uh, ciliated epithelial cells. Um, CEC, which is ciliated epithelial cells, comprise 80% of nasal epithelium, and each express approximately 300 cilia that show coordinated reading. That's neat. So apparently these are very, like, like they, they go with the beat, they're like... Imagine them dancing. Um, so that's cool. Continued coordinated beating. So like windshield wipers. Um, and then the mucociliary clearance eliminates infectious particles by coughing or swallowing. Okay, so I guess this is just like your post nasal drip. It just clears that way if you're swallowing or if you like sneeze or something. The pericellular layer, PCL, mucin layer is pretty cool to block in viral entry. Small particles penetrate, so small, small particles less than 25 nanometers, very small, um, penetrate the pericellular layer, but larger particles cannot. COVID is small, so it can penetrate the PCL theoretically. And they're not sure how, 
COVID and things like influenza can infect airway epithelial cells. But that's what we get for our neat little organoids. Um, so we're gonna jump back up to that picture after we read a little bit, because um, they should be referencing that. Do we not have a method section? What's going on? We have an introduction. And now we're skipping to the results. This is a weird paper. Um, anywho, so nasal and upper airway um, cilia, ciliary epithelial cells are the main targets for initial COVID infection. Um, many respiratory viruses, including COVID, influenza, parainfluenza, rhinovirus, and respiratory syncytial uh, virus, syncytial, I don't know, RSV. Uh, first, in fact, airway, um, ciliary epithelial cells, uh, COVID receptors, ACE2, blah, blah, blah. So here they're saying that COVID infects nasal mucosa by a two-step process, and that's what I'm interested in. First, COVID particles bind the ACE2 receptor on the surface of the airway cilia. So that's step one and then cilia then facilitate the virus transport to the PCL mucin layer. So that's what we saw in the diagram above, is that they're binding to those modal cilia, and then there's just kind of like tracing down the cilia down to the microvilli where they're binding. Initially, only a few ciliated human nasal epithelial cells are produ productively infected. Within the next 24 hours, COVID hijacks the host cell machinery to induce elongated, ooh, that's interesting. So that was what we were seeing with the growth. So within 24 hours, they hijacked the cellular machinery and induced elongated and highly branched microvilli. Villi. Um, so when we scroll back up to the diagram, when I was like, that's weird. Um, so uh, this initial infectious phase is causing, um, once COVID is infecting, it's doing something. Um, it seems like they're not sure how it's happening, but once they infect this microvilli, they actually force them to grow to be longer, and when they're longer, they have more binding sites, more surface area, more binding sites. Um, and since they're like higher up, they have to uh, travel less distance to get to the microvilli, and then they can infect more because they're going to be attaching to it and inject and like following the trait. Well, I don't really know how from the microvilli it's getting in, but we're going to learn that in this paper. But that's interesting. It's force growing them. Crazy. And it seems like activating these um, PAC kinases enables the virus to exit the pericellular layer before lateral spread to other regions, potentially via mucosa, mucociliary transports. Crazy reprogramming pathway, which explains the increase in its attack rate compared to previous variants. This pathway is required for infection. Quick control save. To understand viral entry, we sought to identify which cell types are initially infected. We differentiated primary HNEs. They use way too many acronyms in this. Um, HNEs, human nasal epithelial cells. I think it's acceptable to have like one or two acronyms, but when you start having something like eight or ten, ugh, uh, human nasal epithelial cells. Okay, so to understand viral entry, we sought to identify which cell types are initially infected. We differentiated primary human nasal epithelial cells and air liquid interface, ALI, another acronym. Um, cultures to form nasal epithelial organoids of ciliated goblet and basal cells. Um, so that's just what they did. Do, 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 do. After 20 to 30 days, fully differentiated nasal epithelial organisms were inoculated. So once these are stable um, and they're definitely going to survive, they inoculate with COVID. And 
they're looking at spatial and temporal infection. So this is just showing like how the infection spreads, how it's, uh, they're just looking at like what happens. They're basically like, here's COVID, let's see what happens. Um, spatial, that's position, temporal, that's time. And then they're stopping at different time points, so they're fixing it. Usually you use formalin to fix things, but I'm not sure. They probably have something else that they're doing. But they're um, uh, testing at different time points, to, uh, and this is how they're getting, like, they're being able to tell, like, with the microvilli that they're growing and reprogramming them. Um, they're, like, being, like, we're testing, so, like, they have stop points above. Let's just look at that. Um, so it looks like they stopped at 6, 24, and 48 hours um, is their time points, <clears throat> and that's how they're getting these diagrams. Ooh, those are going to be good. This is going to be a real nice diagram, or a real nice figure down there, um, but I scrolled way too far. This is a dense paper, I love it. It's so nice. Here we go. Okay, so they tested at different time points. Uh, do, 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 do. Same with the antibodies to the nucleocapsid protein and spike protein. Uh, do, 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 do. Um, the nucleocapsid spike protein were only seen in ciliated um, human nasal epithelial cells at 6, 24, and 48 hours post infection, indicating proreferential early infection um, in the, of the ciliated human nasal epithelial cells. And uh, these ciliated seem to be the primary entry point. So at six and 24 hours, approximately only 3% of the human Ciliated human nasal epithelial cells were infected with COVID, but by 48 hours, um, that increased to 80%. So it's sort of like an exponential infection growth, like, uh, and that's likely due to that growing of the microvilli um, that's happening because, like we were talking about, like when uh, COVID has to travel less distance to get to it and it has more surface area, then you're going to have an easier time to um, have that infection progress. Um, so the fact that it's like force growing them, it's really cool. And then not only is it, um, causing this reprogramming and infecting like that local area, but it seems like it's branching out and it's causing, it's allowing it to spread laterally. And that's why, how it's going from like 3% to 80% so fast. Um, let's see if they actually drew that in the diagram, because I'm pretty sure they did. Hmm, it didn't show it. But, um, I guess they're using these red blocks to show it, doing the lateral spread. But technically, instead of growing straight up, this is implying that they're growing outwards as well. There we go. So we hypothesize that initial infection entry are restricted to a few ciliated human um, epithelial, God, too many acronyms, um, H-E-N, uh, that's going to be too hard. I'm just going to go and say human epithelial somethings. And then later, new virions spread laterally into nasal, neighboring nasal epithelium. The pattern did not change at different um, MLIs. Um, what in the world is an MLI? Modes of interference, modes of interaction. 
MOI. will probably tell us at some point. Uh, I'm going to say modes of interaction for now. 3.3.03, uh, suggesting a kinetic bottleneck for infection of viral entry. So um, that's just saying that there is um, an ideal amount of um, movement for the viral entry, and that um, eventually it gets so congested that it's limiting um, other virions ability to actually infect it. So COVID attaches to the cilia during initial stages of infection. Um, these are our um, how it binds. It's binding to those ACE2 receptors and then the TMPRS2 receptor. Uh, do, 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 do. And then to determine if they also localize to modal cilia, um, they co-stain ACE2 and the TMPRS2 with ACE tub apparently some sort of stain. Um, so that's just, this is just the method section, which is weird. The methods is in the results. And then they're trying to determine if, um, so first, sorry, I skipped ahead. So we hypothesize that COVID and other respiratory viruses attached to cilia via the ACE2 to penetrate the uh, perio cellular layer and then enable the virus to traffic through the mucin layer. Determine if the mucin network mesh blocks virus infection. Uh, we treated the human nasal epithelial cells with um, something that's a stain, a, mu a mucin selective protease to disrupt the structure of the mucin network mesh. So they're st disrupting the mucin layer to see if that has any effect, essentially. Um, just like a knockout. If you get rid of the mucin, what will happen? That's essentially their question. Um, mucin network mesh blocks COVID infection. So if they knock out the mucus, then the COVID infection isn't able to go to happen. Transmission electron microscopy. Those are beautiful. I love those images. So it suggests that cilia are hijacked by COVID to cross the nasal epithelial barrier. Uh, they found that the viral particles were attached to cilia near the mucus layer or to cilia and immersed in the PCL uh, in 6% of cultures. Antispike protein monoclonal antibody that neutralizes COVID inhibit attachment of COVID to cilia and decrease infected cell numbers. Um, so that's just saying if you have antibodies, are they going to stop this from happening? The answer is yes. Quantum dots. Those are cool. Uh, so quantum dots are just used to help visualize things and their movement. Yep, right there. So they have time lapse of it, so that should be cool. Let's see if there's a video later that might be in a supplemental attachment. And I guess that's how they learned about that modal uh, beating cilia, where it's like windshield wipers. So with those quantum dots. All right, cool. So we have references to figure one. So now we can jump up to that one, now that we understand what's actually happening. Do, 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 do. Let's just read what the colors are. Where's the figure legend? This is such a weird paper. There's no legend. Uh, infection cultures. Do, 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 do. All right, well, well, uh, so the spike protein SP, 
um, in their control. Nothing happened, so that's good. Um, that's the mock. Uh, then they look at 6, 24, 48, and 96 hours. Um, so the spike protein is green. They're staining it. Um, the spike protein is, so um, these are the same images, but like with it isolated. So it's attaching to the surface and then it's penetrating deeper. So you can see right there that it's over time. So this is a time scale. Um, it's going from 6 to 24 to 48 to 96 hours um, after they introduce COVID to the microvilli, this organoid um, structure. And you can see that it's going down and then also spreading outwards. Um, so this is just an isolated, um, and that's the percentage of spike positive ciliated. So yeah, so it's spreading down and outwards. And then we have our nucleocapsid protein and that's doing the same exact thing, which is just confirmation. Then in this next one, so we have our control. Um, that's weird, why is it? Percentage of, oh, this is the goblet cells. Um, so not really, a little bit, 2%. So the, the, this is percentage. Um, so 2% of the goblet cells are being infected. So it's something that doesn't really happen. And then what's this one? Percentage of spike proteins positive in human nasal epithelial cells. Uh, do, 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 do. So the higher the concentration, I'm guessing I, I, they didn't define what MOI is, but it looks like a concentration. So the higher the concentration, the more, uh, the lower the concentration, the less. That makes sense. And then this is just their plot. Cool. Oh, these are beautiful. So these are um, the electron microscopy imaging of the modal cilia. Um, so they're frozen now, so they're not modal. Um, because uh, to do electron microscopy, you have to actually like, a lot of times um, it, you do like gold plated. So like you'll basically coat it in gold dust and then you'll scan it. Um, other ones don't require you to do that. It really depends on the method they use, but um, essentially these are frozen and they're looking at it um, and cool. So I think these are the spike proteins that are attached to the um, cilia um, on the outside. So this is the control to the left that doesn't have any spike proteins. Uh, this is the one where they introduced the COVID um, to it. So this is what COVID looks like. This is what it would look like on your nasal cells. So we're looking very, very tiny, very, very small. And look, so uh, this is interesting. So um, it's not just binding to these microvilli, it's fusing. So see how the, the membrane on the outside, um, can you guys see my mouse? Yeah. Uh, the membrane right here is fused. So it's fusing and then it's injecting its contents and that's how it's reprogramming those uh, microvilli. And then here's a little diagram of what it's doing. So uh, it binds to the ACE2 receptors, that's for the spike protein, the TMPRSS2 is for the nucleocapsid protein, so it can bind in two different ways. Uh, it does membrane fusion, which I just talked about. Uh, it injects its spiral RNA and then it reprograms um, the cell. It can do that either on these microvilli or it can do it on the surface of the epithelial cells themselves. There's two different modes of entry there, so that's pretty interesting. I would have loved if their figures had legends, but you know, you win some, you lose some. So 
So yeah, so their uh, results support that code binds to the um, ciliary ACE2 receptors to facilitate, facilitate cell entry. And then they hypothesized that depleting the cilia would impede viral infection, so we block ciliary assembly um, using a knockout. So this is actually like a, a genetic knockout. Or a, um, yeah, genetic mutation. It, 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 it's an insertion code knockout. yellow. Uh, make that another yellow. So um, this protein is just saying is critical for modal cilia, cilia formation and all ciliated cells. So they're, um, the, instead of having like these modal cilia, they're like, what if the cilia is immobile? Will the COVID still be able to like travel itself? So basically they're saying, is the motion of this modal cilia causing the COVID to roll down and uh, attach to these ACE2 receptors and the TMS2 receptor, um, or is COVID rolling itself? This is kind of the question they're looking at. So no, so the doing this had no effect. Oh, never mind. So um, that's that's they're just saying what effect this had on the actual or organoid itself, not on the the COVID's ability to attach. So it did have an effect. So the the modal nature of the cilia. Um, is important for the COVID to be able to bind to the receptor. Um, so essentially, if these were just standing still, then um, it would be a lot harder for COVID to do its thing and bind to these. But because they're moving around, it's allowing the COVID to just kind of like roll down and find that receptor and attach to it. So this one, they're just uh, saying this is what we hypothesize, the cilia facilitate virus movement from the tip or body of the cilia ba basally towards the cell body. So that's what we just talked about, this windshield wiper motion. Um, they're hypothesizing that it draws, allows the COVID to sort of like roll down um, towards where it needs, where it wants to go. And that they uh, so this one's like a genetic version of it. This one is more of like um, a uh, they use an inhibitor to sort of inhibit the motion, um, and it did the same thing. So um, it decreased but didn't prevent it from happening. So I guess I'm gonna make this green. So um, doing this inhibitor um, to the to the motion of the cilia. Um, inhibit it, or it didn't prevent it completely, so it's still happening, it's just decreasing it, so it's uh, important in enhancing the effect, not necessarily, um, but COVID can still do it even if these are standing still, essentially. And then they're looking at the endocytosis. Um, I'm going to quickly look up that word to make sure I know exactly what they're saying. Beep, 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 beep. Because I'm not sure if they're saying endocytosis is another word for cell surface membrane for fusion, or if they're saying endocytosis is... Um,
Okay, so endocytosis um, is sort of when um, it accepts. So, uh, it, okay, so they're basically asking the question, will, um, is, is, the, is the, the cell sort of accepting um, the, the COVID, like uh, capturing it like this and allowing it to come in? Or is COVID forcing itself fusing to the membrane and injecting it. So that, that it's looking at like two sides of this question saying, is it, is it, is it a lot like COVID is like seeing as something that it wants to take in or is COVID forcefully in, like uh, binding and injecting itself? And earlier we already saw the answer is that it's forcefully binding itself and injecting the um, RNA in. Yeah, and they're saying that um, they did some stuff to it. The en endosomal um, acidification is not required for entry into human nasal epithelial cells. So they're saying, yep, this tells us that it is fusing to the, outside, to the uh, external surface of the membrane and is binding and then injecting itself in. It seems like the data, s so they're saying alternatively an ACE2 and SARS-CoV-2 complex is transported from the tip to the cilia to the cell body by the ciliary dependent enterograde process and the virus fuses of the cell membrane via an endocytic independent process, figure 2HII. GH. So right here. So, um, okay, so they're saying that they're not sure, but they, they see evidence possibly for both. So, um, mm, I don't necessarily agree, I think it's more, so I think it is binding and inserting either to these modal cilia and then to the um, surface itself. I think that's definitely true, they showed that for a fact. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say this is endocytosis, um, uh, hey Patrick, when you get a chance, how long are COVID people, COVID positive people contagious? Um, it depends. Um, everyone's different. My partner was contagious for 56 days. Um, essentially the rule of thumb is if you're testing positive on a rapid test, you're likely infectious. Uh, and then there's a couple days before um, you test positive on a rapid test that you would be infectious, and then there's um, a couple days after uh, you test negative that you will still be infectious. Um, they've shown this, they did a recent study in children and showed that even when you are t uh, negative on the rapid test, um, you are still infectious for um, at least two days after um, the, the, the first negative test or transmitting infectious material. You're welcome. So they're noting that that happens. I don't necessarily agree that it is an endocytosis process. Um, I, I think it's still just the fusion. Oh, never mind. They're saying it's an endocytic independent process. It's independent of that. So yeah, okay. I agree with them again. We're back on track. And then they're just saying more work needs to be done in the future to see how it's happening, that they're binding to the surface. Um, of the membrane and doing that. So newly produced COVID particles co-localized with microvilli. Uh, the uh, the lie. Uh, our data indicate that the percentage of COVID infection cells increased from 24 to 48 um, hours past infection, post-infection, 
Um, in contrast, the virus rapidly spreads without an evident lag phase in vero cells. Um, to, 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 to better understand virus infection and nasal epithelium, we examine the egress of virus from the few initially uh, infected cells. Uh, to, 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 in cacao, in cacao two in vero cells, uh, SARS-CoV-2 infection promotes actin-based fallopodia protrusion and virus particles associated with structures. Infection of virus containing fallopodia might be important for COVID egress. And cell to cell spread of progeny virions in uh, human, human nasal epithelial cells. Whether canonical microvilli exist on pulmonary airway. Epithelial cells have been unclear. We use scanning electron microscopy and IF staining to systematically characterize microvilli like structures and primary airway epithelial cells. Classes of protrusions were noted on the epithelial surface. Um, cool. Uh, long, wide modal cilia and stubby dome like microvilli. It's yellow. Do I have staining in multiple core microvilli proteins? These structures are canonical microvilli. Microvilli were not found on the goblet cells. So I just want to take a second and look at these things. This is the same thing as above, but this is what I want to look at. Cool. So these are the COVID particles, and they're going down. Neat. Next, we sought to test if microvilli had a role in viral infection. We co-stained and. Da -da 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 -da. So then the green and the red, um, using the same staining classification as above, green is spike protein, red is the nucleocapsid protein. Um, not sure what blue is. They tested this at different concentrations of COVID, um, different concentrations that they like put on the microvilli or the human organoid. Um, model that they're using. Do, do, do. So they're just noting what we already said in the figure, um, that microvilli with attached virions were seen protruding from the membrane as early as 24 hours uh, post-inoculation or post-infection. And they found um, abundant microvilli, or sorry, abundant COVID particles on the uh, microvilli rather than on the modal cell, indicating that the newly generated virus particles accumulated on the microvillar structures. Hello! Indicating that newly generated virus particles accumulated on the microvillar structures. We also noted that small viral vesicles clustered near in microvilli and large viral containing vesicles were in the cytoplasm near that side of the cells, figure S3G. Uh, it's probably on the next page. S3G.
guess I'll just take their word for it. I can't really tell from their pictures. Uh, next, we looked for viral binding to microbial and infected animals. We infected mice um, with COVID and collected nasal epithelium for immunohistochemistry at 48 hours post-infection. So cool, they're doing a comparison to mice. Um, so they're not just using their organoid model, they're using a mouse model. Whatever, I'll just highlight the whole thing. Uh, can you summarize for us average people? Yes, I uh, will. Um, so, so far, what we've learned is that after your code infection, so um, in our nose, uh, we have um, these tiny little cells uh, that will act like little windshield wipers. They're called modal cilia. Um, and then we have um, these tiny little nubs, kind of like brushes, um, that are called microvilli. And the modal cilia, so when COVID uh, is in our mucus, so we have our mucus membrane, which is right here, which is our snot. So um, when we inhale COVID and it gets in our airways, it um, enters and attaches to the mucous membrane. That's our first layer of defense. And what it's doing is we have these little windshield wiper things. It's sticking to the ends of these. Um, uh, they're called pericellular layer, uh, the uh, modal cilia. Um, so they stick to those. And through this windshield wiper motion, that just happens um, throughout the day as part of our cellular makeup, um, the COVID virus slowly goes down and it'll either bind to receptors on the modal cilia or they'll get pushed down to these microvilli, these little brushes, and they'll bind to that. Um, and it seems like they uh, have a preference to bind to that. And when they bind to that, um, they do two cool things um, or two interesting things. So the first is that they reprogram these little brushes uh, causing them to grow. And when they grow, it makes it easier for more COVID to infect um, them because when you have something that's bigger, it has more surface area. And when you have more surface area, it's easier for things to bind to it. Um, so they reprogram these, micro these little brushes to make them bigger brushes. And since they like the big brushes, they can bind more uh, virus particles to them, which allows uh, more viral RNA to be injected into your body. Um, and that's, that's essentially what this paper is saying. It's, it's uh, found this really neat thing that COVID does and how it infects us through our nasal passages. Um, and then it just like gets super, super technical, but that's like the essence of it. So interesting and terrifying, yes. Um, it's very interesting because um, in like s some random paper that we were reading um, a couple weeks ago, I just offhandedly made a comment about this. I was like, whoa, 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 <laughs> wait up. S say what now? Uh, and um, so now I, I like, I'm going through this paper um, and it has really, really beautiful images. So um, like, uh, I like the other one better. Where's the, this one? So like these are those little hairs, uh, those uh, little modal um, fingers that go back and forth uh, in our nasal passages. Um, and then uh, the COVID will stick to those and get pulled down over time um, just from the natural movement. And then they'll bind to the microvii, these things right here, and fuse to the membrane uh, using our ACE2 receptors in our TMSS2, the thing that binds to the, um, the cilia, yes, um, C-I-L-L-A. Um, they're just the fun little name for the, um, the fingers in our um, nasal cells. Our nasal cells have different layers. Here, let's just go to a... Because this paper doesn't have a really good, like, too many L's. Come on.
Here we go. This is a good one. So, um, ooh. I just want to see your pictures. All right, I'm going to go back one. It's not happy with me. Um, so in our, in our noses, we have, um, non, uh, finger is this article available to the public? Yes, it is available to the public. It's a, I only show free articles. Um, the title, is uh, SARS-CoV-2 replication in airway epithelia requires modal cilia and um, microvillar programming. Uh, I was way back in 2005. Do hi Mike. Uh, do, 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 do. perfect. Thank you. Um, so yeah, so that that's that's what they are. Um, yeah. Here we go. So, do, 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 suggesting that COVID interacts with microvilli to spread the respiratory tract infection in animals. Um, so we should have mouse images further uh, down below. So this is just saying um, these are the things that are sort of upregulated that are causing that growth of the microvilli when it's being reprogrammed. Ooh, that'll be interesting. Uh, so in figure 4b, they're showing a dome-like structure. So let's skip to that. Figure 4b. So I guess this is the dome-like structure. Hmm. We'll have to read more. Multiple coated particles containing vesicles appeared on this dome-like structure, uh, 4C, left panel, and 4A. 4C, left panel, 4A. So I guess once these um, virions, these virions are clumping together, creating a dome. And then they're just repeating what they told us earlier. Infection also induced um, branched microvillar structures with many attached or budding viral particles at 48. Uh, that's interesting, budding viral particles. So not only is it doing like infection, it's uh, replicating itself and producing more virus um, off of the structure itself. Uh, Gotcha. Have they compared the finding with me using a nasal spray like Novit? No. So this is just um, a theory, or not a theory paper. This is um, an experimental model studying viral entry of the cells. Um, that's probably something we'll move to um, later on, but right now they're working on characterization of being like, hey, we found this really cool thing. This is exactly how it works, and these are all the details of how it works. Um, does Novid reduce the ability for COVID to change the surface spread easier? Um, I'm curious what they find out. Yeah, 
So um, I've done a couple papers on Novid, but I haven't like made them short yet, short videos, but I have a couple um, TikTok videos um, like this one that I'm recording now uh, where you can go back and watch them. They're super long though, but um, I have three of those on um, the, uh, or two on the nitric oxide nasal sprays like Novid. Um, and then another one that's on an experimental one that actually hasn't been commercially produced yet. So ignore that one. But um, for the two nitric oxide one, it doesn't do anything to prevent COVID. Um, it can help reduce viral loads um, if you take in a lot of times a day, like between three and six times a day, um, over like three to six hour intervals. Um, and yeah, so it, it, it looks like it helps reduce viral load a little bit in people that have COVID and are producing it. Didn't do anything to protect people from getting COVID. Um, that's what I learned from those papers. Compared to mock infection, importantly, COVID infection dramatically increased highly. Extended microvilli is early as 24 hours. So it's infecting these uh, early on, a couple cells or a couple uh, microvilli early on, causing that branch growth. Uh, you can see them um, start to extend as early as 24 hours um, post-infection. Okay, gotcha. That's interesting. Reduces battery load when used regularly throughout the day. Yes, they have to be used very regularly. Um, mucus production will uh, clear the effects. Um, it, it, it just won't last for a long time. So these microvilli were accompanied by an accumulation of virus particles on the surface. These results support our model that COVID infection modulates the activity structure and length of microvilli to facilitate viral load, egress, and spread. It's one of the big parts of this. Very interesting. We use inhibitors of microvilli core protein to determine if the loss of microvilli inhibits infection. Treated cells are fixed and stained. I'm not super interested in that. Oh, the inhibitor. Oh, so the inhibitors had no effect within the first 24 hours, indicating they do not inhibit entry. And one of these again. Okay. So the microvilli don't seem to participate in COVID viral entry. That's interesting. But they play a role in viral egress. So I might have been saying something backwards. Uh, so some cilia are the microvilli during viral entry. So the cilia, they're the modal thing. Um, so I guess they're attaching and fusing to the cilia, the, the fingers, um, and when they're injecting the viral RNA, they're causing a secondary thing of the, the little comb-like structures of microvilli to grow. Um, and then the virus, so the virus buds from these microvilli and are ejected that way. Okay, that's in that's interesting. That makes more sense. Science is very interesting. Next, we hypothesized by associating with elongated microvilli, SARS-CoV-2, traffic to the surface mucus layer. In this model, progeny variants use mucus flow to traverse the airway tract to infect other airway cells. To test this, we used um, all the cultures from patients with primary ciliary dyskinesia. Uh, they have little um, motility. Uh, the cilia, this rare autosomal recessive disorder results from functional defects. Uh, da, 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 da. 
so that they're a good model, I guess, so to prevent the, the cilia from moving. And they have normal cilia density, so it's a good test for that. Oh, that one actually had a figure title. Weird. Um, do, 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 do. Just saw a bunch of things. Oh, we gotcha. Very good to know. Makes me wonder if it does that to our noses. What is it doing to my heart? I have heart. Um, yeah, so it's going to be completely... So this is just for viral entry. Um, we're looking specifically at, like, uh, the things that happen immediately at the onset of an infection when you inhale the... Um, uh, virus, but yeah, it does do a lot of stuff to the heart as well. Um, I guess, yeah, I, I haven't, they haven't produ produced too much on heart structure changes, but the biggest thing is myocardial infarctions, um, local damage, um, uh, perfusion issues uh, to the heart, um, but I'm still waiting for them to do really deep, in-depth studies of um, heart necropsies. All right, so in these cultures with that, patients with that um, modal cilia disorder, um, so they're not windshield wipering like they should, the patients had fewer COVID infection than healthy donors, suggesting that modal cilia transport is important uh, later in infection. So like after this initial infection, they bud in the microvilli, and then these uh, sort of spread them around, this action of going uh, shoots them off uh, into the mucus to go laterally to infect other cells. That's sort of what that's implying. Uh, do, do, do you have congestive, congestive heart failure from COVID? My structure is good, just swollen. Yeah, so um, I don't know. I, I need to, that's one of my things. They like, I have not found really good heart studies yet, specific heart studies. Um, but we do know that it causes heart, congestive heart failure and things like that. Um, so yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Health the samples showed long streaks of spike protein positive epithelial cells that apparently trace viral infections along the flows in the mucus layer and PCD nasal epithelial cells. So these are the um, damaged modal cilia. Uh, SARS could be too only infected immediately surrounding cells, forming small local plaques. So yeah, the motility is very important. Ah. Gentle pipetting to induce mechanical mucus flow increase the number of infected cells. So if you have a lot of mucus flow, um, that's going to spread the infection. If you have, um, I'm happy they did that. These, these people are smart. Um, and uh, if you have modal cilia, um, very modal cilia, that'll spread the infection as well to other cells in your nasal passages. Oh my god, this is a long one. How much longer is this paper? Oh good. I think that was, I think we're almost on the last page. I was like, this is going on forever. Yeah, just more images and figures and some methods. Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, I'm hoping they out me in a study. Uh, they don't seem to know much. Uh, of those and Typhus is all very interesting. Yeah, yeah. I'm. Uh, I I did find a paper on congestive heart failure. Let me. I have a, a. I keep all the interesting papers on a notes app that I see in, when I'm like glancing through um, articles and stuff.
Mm, I'm not finding it, but it is on my list. Um, do, 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 do. That's an early figure. We are past that. Here we go. We're on the pack. Um, given that regulatory kinases control cytoskeletal dynamics, including microvilli, uh, we asked how infection activates host signaling pathways to modulate microvilli and biogenesis, thereby facilitating vir viral egress. That's just when that virus goes out. Uh, we use global phosphoproteomics to find protein kinases affected by COVID infection. We infected um, alley culture uh, human nasal epithelial cells with COVID at um, MOI, I never find that, uh, as 0 0.3 of 0 0.3, 4, 6, 24, 36, and 48 hours post infection or incubation. Uh, in parallel with mock controls, cells are harvested and extracted and were prepared for phosphoproteomic mass spectrometry and signal analysis. Do, 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 do. And what did you find doing this? So based on their uh, analysis, they found 72 kinases that are potentially highly activated after COVID infection, which is good because we could use these as um, uh, uh, biomolecular targets. So they focus on five kinases. Um, so they focus on five, including cytoskeletal reorganizing P21 activated kinase one and four, so PAC1, PAC4, um, AKT1 slash two, and monogen activated protein kinase P38 alpha. Um, so these are just targets that they looked at. And so their uh, COVID activates, COVID infection activates these five kinases. So these will be important later on uh, in the future when I look at um, different signaling pathways. And uh, interestingly, when they used inhibitors for these uh, PAC1, PAC4, uh, KenK4, MAP, CAP, K2 inhibitors, uh, it decreased the number of infected cells. So blocking those channels uh, decreased the ability of COVID to infect the cells. So that's why you look for that type of stuff and why you look for these type of cell pathways is so that you can potentially come up with uh, treatment modalities where you give... Um, it, like in localized inhibitors, this could put, be put in a nasal spray with PAC1, PAC4, CMK4, and MAPCAP2 inhibitors. Spray that in your nasal passageways and then um, hopefully um, decrease the severity of the COVID infection uh, early on. That's, that's the type of stuff that you would be thinking about. And that's always good to see. So um, you don't have cytotoxicity, you don't have adverse event, like that bad stuff happening. With PAC4 inhibition affecting um, viral replication the most. So that would probably be the target for like a nasal spray pack four inhibitors. And they theorize that the PAC1, PAC4 signaling seems to regulate microbial uh, dynamics, BI dynamics, 
rely dynamics during SARS-CoV-2 egress and nasal epithelium, so it's preventing um, the spread of these uh, new COVID variants. Uh, and it looks like these uh, PAC1, PAC4 regulate microvilli by phosphorylating downstream targets during infection. So um, essentially what we just said is that it's um, inhibiting the PAC4 specifically um, prevents um, this uh, budding that occurs in the microvilli uh, later on. limiting like the viral egress, the viral um, spreading. So these are potential viral uh, therapeutic targets that you would put into a nasal spray. And then they actually did that in the mice. And then they're, they're using a lot of where they're, they're just filling space. It's kind of weird. But um, they're saying a lot of stuff to essentially say that um, Omicron became more efficient at this process than um, Delta. And here we go, that's what I was looking for. So um, using the PAC1, PAC4 uh, inhibitors in the mice um, attenuated the viral spread in mice, uh, blocking the late phase viral spread, but not the initial binding to the cilia. So they're not, um, I guess the way to say it is it's not going to do anything for the initial part of the infection, but what it will do is prevent it from continuing on. Um, so that's really nice and interesting. They're saying that we should turn this into a drug, an easily delivered drug. Cool. Uh, sorry, I just sped red at the end. Um, so I guess for the overview of this paper, we can just use the diagram now that we know what's going on. Um, so when you, what this paper taught us is that um, COVID will infect um, the nasal passageways. Um, so it will initially get caught in our mucus, uh, the snot, the uh, stuff that's uh, sticky in our nose when you put your finger up there, it's gonna be kind of wet. That's where it's initially gonna stick to. Um, and then we have modal cilia that are like little windshield wipers that will um, sort of like try and clear things out naturally. That's what they're there for. 
Um, but what they end up doing in this case is the COVID will stick to them and then it'll work its way down uh, into a, to a receptor, it'll bind. Um, there's two different binding sites to the N protein and to the S protein on COVID. Um, the cilia have two receptors for that and um, the COVID will bind to that, insert its viral RNA, which will reprogram the microvilli, the little comb-like structures at the bottom. Um, these will uh, then grow um, and uh, buds will happen. So the buds, it, it, they'll grow um, uh, and create new COVID particles uh, and they'll um, pop off. And then these will be uh, spread in the mucus and to neighboring cilia that are whipping back and forth, uh, these windshield wipers, and they'll attach and then they'll infect and then they'll spread laterally. Um, and that's sort of a neat, a uh, novel mechanism that they found that these, uh, how COVID will infect um, us through our nasal passageways. And uh, not only will this happen, but uh, they found like, okay, so how can we stop this from happening? And they looked at um, PAC1 and PAC4 uh, inhibitors, um, which is down here, the PAC1 and PAC4. And they found that if you use these inhibitors, you can severely cut um, COVID's ability to um, bud uh, and then spread. So this will dramatically reduce viral load. Um, so it won't do anything about you being infected with COVID, but it'll prevent you from um, having infectious COVID in your nasal passageways and having the infection continue in your nasal passageways. So it's really good for that. This could be developed into a nasal spray. Um, and that's sort of the gist of this paper. So that was a long one, that was a dense one, but we got through it and it was really interesting. Um, so I'm actually gonna log off uh, and do some housework, but thank you all for stopping by. Have a good one.